Welcome to the Thriving Artist Podcast, where we share strategies and support for artists to thrive. We know that the art world can feel like a lonely place, and we want to provide a network of support, impactful strategies, and an abundance of encouragement to help you grow your authentic art career. We're your hosts. I'm Jamie Smith. And I'm Kaylin Butine, and we are also the co-founders of the Thrive Together Network, a community of female and non-binary identifying artists and artists who are caregivers. We truly believe in community over competition, and we're so glad you're here. Enjoy this episode. Welcome to this episode of the Thriving Artist Podcast. We are so glad you're here. I'm Kaylin Butine, one of your hosts, and I'm proud to share that I financed my family's brand new kitchen renovation with money that I made in my art business. And I'm Jamie Smith. I am your second host, and I am very proud that I recently took the time to redo my website to make the buying experience of my art easier and more meaningful for my customers. It's hard to make time to do those things. Yes, Making art is such a hard job in many ways. We have to be creative. We have to find the inspiration, and then we have to make this beautiful thing. Then we add the idea that we have to sell this beautiful thing and it can often feel a little impossible. Yes. So what we have realized from working with hundreds of artists over the years, which is crazy to think about, Kaylin, we've Mm -hmm. been doing this a while, is that it is possible to make a living through your creative work. And it also really helps to have a bit of a plan. It helps to take charge and feel empowered by the business of art instead of feeling bogged down from it. Yes. And so Jamie and I wanted to share some very easy and quick things that you can do right now that are going to increase your art income. These things are small tips, but they're really going to lay a foundation for what can snowball into larger financial rewards. And we really hope these things will help you yield big results in your future art career. So the first tip, the first way that we want you to increase your art income is by knowing your numbers. You're going to hear us say this. We are we have a month-long um, program of episodes just about money mindset, and know your numbers is sort of our um, buzz phrase, if you will. Our theme. Um, our theme, yes. Knowing your business and personal monthly financials is really what puts you in the driver's seat of your business. It can feel overwhelming when you are behind, when you don't know where your money is going, you don't know your numbers, you don't really know what's happening in your accounts. Um, and it it's something that just continues to build and snowball. So it's very easy to get behind and feel overwhelmed and feel like the knowledge of your numbers is a hole that you have to dig yourself out of. Um, So one way that I've learned from Jamie to really help with that overwhelm is to just start with last month. You can figure out what money came into your business last month and figure out what money came out in your business last month. Just create a simple spreadsheet to document this, look at receipts, look at your credit card statement, look at where your money went, and then um, look at what money came in, what sales you made. Once you have one month done, you're gonna wanna know your numbers every month. And we will in the future be talking about some strategies for better knowledge of longer term um, understanding your numbers. Um, This, thing, this idea of knowing your numbers and this strategy of taking it one month at a time is something that I actually learned when I joined Thrive a few years ago and Jamie was teaching business planning on her Thrive Tea Time, which as you all know, we are now co-partners in hosting our network and our weekly session is called Art and Tea. Um, But it, it was very revolutionary for me just to kind of start small with this idea of taking it one month at a time and just making making it out in a simple spreadsheet. Um, and really what we're trying to help you understand is that when you 
feel empowered, when you have the knowledge of your money, you can let your money take care of you because it becomes this relationship that feels amicable, that feels healthy, that feels reciprocal, reciprocal over time. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's so hard to get started with these things, but again, they just yield such big benefits over time. So we're really excited. And this leads right into number two, because our number two strategy for increasing your income is actually to cut some unnecessary expenses. And the only way we really know what to do and how to do that is by knowing our numbers and where we're actually spending our money now. What I learned probably too late, I wish I had learned this right away, is that I was always focused on increasing my income by selling more, Mm -hmm. adding more, and then I could pay for everything I needed to do. But actually this aha moment came when it's, what if I just didn't spend as much. Mm. I actually made a very lean business and was very careful of where I put my money because then that money stays in the business. I've actually increased my income without having to push that that sales lever. Yes. So I really love this one. And what I have found um, for me, it's a very simple, I just wanted to give you an example is that we talked about this in another episode around time blocking. And a big one for me is time blocking so that I have food prep for the studio. Mm-hmm. Because what I was finding when I started to track my expenses is that it was all these little studio snacks and these <laughs> ways of feeling like I needed a break. So I'd go get a coffee or a tea. And once I started to see this was happening, I realized that, you know, I could save about, you know, $80 plus a month. And all of a sudden it became sort of exciting to think I'm going to be planned and bring food. And when I need a break, I'm going to take my cup of tea outside and mm-hmm. have a break Um, instead of sort of, in a way, like throwing away my money, um, just because I wasn't taking care of it. And now instead of feeling that I'm cutting an expense and that I'm depriving myself, I actually feel extremely empowered that I think this is money staying in my business by drinking this you know, tea that I made with hot water in my own studio. (laughs) That you bought at the grocery store rather than buying from the cafe. Exactly. (laughs) Um, Just a tip for me in this idea of cutting expenses rather than always like thinking to increase our income instead is um, art supplies. I'm just like one of those people Mm -hmm. that the minute I run out of something, I just like order the next version of it. Um, another like big spending for supplies is I love, you know, part of my work and part of the material that I use in my practice is vintage or thrifted fabric and material, like kind of, um, domestic material. And I love the like thrill of the hunt, like the retail therapy of like going to the store and, um, hunting through the, the bins of like old quilt blocks or whatever. And, um, you know, that I, like, I love calling that studio time. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, those like 10, 12, $20 trips to the thrift store, getting materials, they add up. And, you know, uh, instead of like, just looking at the huge bookshelf, the huge storage shelf of material that I already have to start my next piece and just looking at what's around me and being inspired with the material, with the work that I've already done. Um, I, you know, just want that quick hit of like, let me go find this thing. Um, but again, it's like that being intentional, feeling the abundance of what I already have, what is already wealth that I own, what is already an asset instead of the scarcity mindset of looking for the next thing to kind of like feed us. So um, I love that tip number two, like just kind of being mindful in where you can cut something or withhold um, expenses. And that will instantly help you feel richer and increase your income because you're not spending money, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're keeping it. Hello, amazing artists. Jamie here with a quick note. Kaylin and I are so excited to share that we are launching DIY courses on the TTN network. We want members to have access to the knowledge they need to thrive. I'm especially excited as I will be sharing my popular class, the Business Planning for Artists course on the network. This is made up of video content that you can work through at your own pace. 
And because I truly believe in community, there of course is a network group. And this is where members can connect, ask questions directly to me. I am here to help. I have taught this course many times over the years. I have helped countless artists create a business plan to help them thrive. And this TTN course is an accumulation of everything I have learned. There are new video lessons, there's the business plan PDF, financial money tracker spreadsheet, community prompts, and more. The course is $90 and you will leave with a full business plan to help you guide guide you throughout your year ahead or wherever you're at in your business cycle. You will learn strategies and systems that you can stick to for your entire career. Seriously, this is a tool that you can use over and over again. So get ready to create a vision for your business, get clear on your why, price your offerings, get your financials organized, you will map out sales targets for each month and plan a marketing strategy that gets you there. Finally, at the end, we're going to create a full roadmap with action steps to guide you throughout the next months of your business or the next year. This course is useful no matter where you are as an artist. If you are full-time as an artist, this business plan is going to help you get a path to move forward, kind of give you that plan you might be craving. If art is your side hustle, this is going to help you move that towards your goals, whatever those may be. The strategies and tools can support you at any stage of your career, and they're going to help boost you to the next. So hop on the network and under the courses tab, you will be able to purchase the business planning for artists course right away and get started. I can't wait to help you grow and thrive as an artist. So this leads to our third tip in five ways to increase your art income is to audit your offerings list. This is another thing that I learned from Jamie um, just when I was um, part of that business planning course that she did on Thrive and that is now offered on our network. Um, Jamie walks you, it, participants of the course, through an exercise to create an offerings list, which is basically when you write out everything that you sell in your art business. So it's all of your offerings. It's all of like the things on your table. Um, and Jamie and I both have seen so many artists over the years that just have tons of offerings, dozens of different things like paintings of every size, pillowcases, bags, you know, all of these different things, earrings, none of that is bad. But the danger is that when you have all of these different offerings, it really pulls your energy, it pulls your resources, and it pulls your money in many different directions. Because if you're wanting to sell all of these things, you have to have shipping materials, you have to have product, you have to have website space, you have to have writing and, you know, sort of photographs taken, like all of the many, many things, all of the pieces that go into supporting the sale of something, the more offerings you have, you have to do that same, you know, admin work for all of those offerings. Um, and, and for your customers too, like it can become, you know, difficult for them to decide what to buy. So we want you to really consider your offerings list, consider what you're selling and see you know, take some inventory and see what works best for you. Like what type of painting, what size, what price range um, is selling the best? What do you enjoy making the most? What feels simple to you? And where can you sort of cull the fat in that experience so that, again, you have a simple but more abundant um, system for how you're selling your art. We feel like simplifying and doing an audit of your offerings will help you increase your art income. It's huge. And it's so easy to add more. It kind of fits on this hamster wheel of more sales, more of this. So I'm going to add more yeah. products. And we are actually advocating for more intentionality yeah. and care and a lot more of reflection, which leads into this tip number four, which again, I feel like a broken record, but by knowing our numbers, we could set financial goals. So having financial goals that guide you along the way they just make for goals that have very clear numbers. And I feel like in the arts, sometimes very nebulous on how we're doing. Mm -hmm. It can feel 
because there's no linear path in the arts and there's no, I create this piece. And so now this happens. All of us are in this windy path of discovery. And then this concept leads to this. Whereas the numbers don't lie. They are actually a really beautiful guidepost. And instead of avoiding this, it's actually going to really help us in propelling forward and bringing in more income. Mm. Income grows. What we see, what we can focus on will grow. When we don't have this focus, we actually can very easily flounder. So I really encourage you, you know, as we said before, our dream is that more artists are financially literate and are financially invested in what they're doing, because that is going to help you kind of guide you and really help, you know, we need creative constraints and we need, and I think numbers can be that they can creatively help us and guide us. So Mm -hmm. instead of trying the new thing, you know, we realize this sold. So why don't we use that number to kind of guide us to keep this idea flowing and keep making in that way. So I think numbers can be really creative. I feel like I'm, you know, trying to sell them, but I really, really do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, having those financial goals are really, really important. Jamie, what's a financial goal that you have for your art business? Give us like a concrete idea. Well, right now, because of the season I'm in and because of all our work with TTN, I had to be really realistic about what financial goals I wanted to put to my art because it's not really fair to myself or my art practice to pretend that I'm going to pay myself, you know, a big paycheck from my art. So my goal right now is actually that my art business pays my studio rent consistently and continues to kind of pay for itself Mm -hmm. because that makes me feel very proud that there is income coming in and it pushes me as well to do the sort of business tasks that maybe I would let go if I didn't have this financial goal. So redoing the website, those types of things really are driven by that I need to invest in the business to allow it to invest in me with paying for things like studio rent. Such a good concrete goal and way to frame it. Um, Okay, we're already at number five. Our last easy tip for you for increasing your art income is to focus on the customers that you already have. This is such a good one and one that I think is my favorite because it's one that I'm like excited to implement. It's something I I don't do well at and something I really want to um, be better about. Again, we talked about this hamster wheel that it's we're always on to the new thing. We always want to build a bigger following, to get new customers, to sell to more people. Um, but really, when you have sold a piece of your art in the past, that is a bigger win than maybe we realize or maybe we should give it the respect that it deserves. Like we, it takes a lot for somebody to invest in us and to buy our work. Um, And you've probably heard this before, but it's true that it actually is more um, likely that you will sell to an older customer, um, a customer who has already purchased from you, than get new, many, many new customers who will sell um, new work. So we want you to focus on the customers that you already have, the people who have shown up for you, who have supported you and who have purchased your art over time and figure out ways to get in connection with those customers, ways that you can strengthen your relationship with those customers um, and focus on your customer follow-up experience that we think will lead to more sales in the future. Um, An easy thing to do right now today is to just send an email to check in on people. Hey, remember when you bought that painting from me last year? Just wanted to check in and thank you again and um, see how the painting is doing. Are you enjoying it? Is it in your dining room? Like you said, you thought it might be. Can I see a picture? Just, you know, follow up, reach out and say hello. Cultivate the community that you have already grown own around your art practice and around your sales. Um, And that community will actually be your marketing, right? They will share your work with others. They will have a better experience and have a better, you know, better thoughts about you and your work when you're building a abundant relationship with them. So again, our last tip is to focus on the customers that you already have. And we really believe that this will increase your art income. 
We also hope that this was a good episode for you and that you can pick one or two of these and actually start today. So it might be sending that email to a customer. It might be starting looking at your money from last month, or maybe it's time to audit your offerings list. But all of these do have ripple effects and they do add more abundance over time. And we know there's lots to think about here. We want these to be practical, tangible actions that will help increase your income and more importantly, help Help you cultivate those money habits and strengthen those. As Jamie said, we're so excited to see you increase your income to be artists who are thriving and who are living rich, abundant lives. We hope this episode was helpful. If you liked it, we would love for you to leave us a review and show your support of the podcast. We're working hard to provide episodes that are useful for you, and we appreciate you sharing this episode and giving us a review. As always, Jamie and I are here for you. We're cheering for you, and we really believe the work that you are making and the work that you are putting out into the world. 